buying a Newfoundland puppy can be very daunting. Yes, it is exciting, but you may have heard, make sure the parents are health tested and you may not know what that means. So in this video, we aim to teach you what health tests are, why the breeders should be doing them, and what the results mean. You may ask yourself, why do I need to know this? Isn't that the breeder's job? Well, sadly, not all breeders breed for the right reasons and simply wanting a puppy from your own dog isn't really a good enough reason to breed a litter. Some wonderful people are actually bad breeders. Usually it's just a case of being uneducated and thinking that throwing two dogs together of the same breed is all that's required for a good breeding programme. Sadly, some breeders will lie and skirt around the truth. What's the first thing you do when you buy a car? You research that car. You make sure everything is above board. But what you're buying when you buy a puppy is you're buying a life. Breeders who breed for health have their dogs screened for the four main hereditary conditions within the breed, which is hip dysplasia, elbow dysplasia, heart conditions, and a condition called cystinemia. Let's start with hip and elbow scoring. The dogs are taken to the vet where x-rays are performed and those x-rays are sent off to different governing bodies for a score. In the UK, that is the BVA, the British Veterinary Association, and they score on a numbers system. As you can see, there's a certificate here for elbows. There's a zero, zero score, which is a perfect score. There are two elbows, so a zero for the left and a zero for the right. You can also get a one elbow, which is considered acceptable in some situations for breeding, depending on the dog's background and who the dog is bred to. You can also get a two elbow score, which is moderate elbow dysplasia and a score of three, which is severe elbow dysplasia. Moving on to hips here in the UK, moving on to hips with the BVA, the hips are scored on a numbers system and points are given for the reason for that score. They scored from 0 to 53, so a total of 106. The lower the score, the better. As you can see in this example, the hip score is 3 and 3 on each side. Nice even score, quite low, 6 in total. It's believed that anything under 10 is fantastic. Anything under 18 is acceptable, according to the OFA's conversion chart and that is given that the hips are somewhat even as a total score under 10 great under 18 acceptable and non-displacic here is a certificate from the australian scheme which has both the hips and the elbows it's the same scoring system generally as the british bva and again it's a, an ideal score three three hips zero zero elbows which is what you should be looking for. Here is an OFA example of clean elbows. And they also have scores one, two, and three. However, they do explain the type of elbow dysplasia that they have found. If they do in fact find elbow dysplasia in the dog. Moving on to hips with the OFA. They are scored just a little bit differently. They use words rather than a number score. You can have a score of excellent, good, fair, borderline, mild, moderate or severe hip dysplasia. I think with the OFA it's a little bit more self-explanatory. There's a bit, little bit of confusion with the BVA scores and, and what they mean. But the OFA do have a conversion. That conversion tells us that a hip score of 2-2 two -two or below would be an excellent score with the OFA. Anything above that up to 10 in total is a, a good hip score and anything from 10 to under 18 is a fair score. If you're wondering about the cost of hip and elbow scoring in the UK on average for the x-rays and for submission depending on who it is you use you would expect to pay around about 400 500 pounds Moving on to heart tests, a cardiologist will have examined the dog's heart through colour flow echo doppler, which is basically an ultrasound of the heart. 
they'll check for any abnormalities in the structure and also look at the blood flow through the heart the heart is scored normal equivocal and abnormal clear self-explanatory means that the heart is clear of any abnormalities then you can get an equivocal heart score which doesn't mean that the dog is affected by anything it's generally just a soft marker such as a higher than desirable blood flow through the aorta and then you can also get an affected heart which is heart disease or a different heart condition and any dog with an affected heart score should not be bred from if a dog with an equivocal heart score is bred it should only be bred to a clear dog with a, a clear background you might be wondering what's the cost for a heart test in the UK, it varies vastly from cardiologist to cardiologist. However, we pay around £180, but that does entail a few hours travel. As cardiologists that are qualified to perform this test are few and far between. Cystinemia. Cystinemia is a simple DNA test. All you have to do is order a kit, take a swab of the inside of the dog's mouth following the instructions not to have your dog next to other dogs or food or water for an hour. You swab the cheek, you pop that in the post and you send it back to the lab for testing. You will usually get your results back within a couple of weeks. It is an autosomal recessive gene. Therefore, you can get clear, carrier or affected. If you breed a clear dog to a carrier or in fact an affected dog, none of the puppies will be affected by the condition. However, if you breed a carrier to a carrier or an affected to a carrier, then you will produce puppies that are affected and suffer from this horrible disease. And while it might be easy to say, okay, let's just breed from clear dogs. If we eradicated carrier dogs, then we would reduce the gene pool hugely and have little to no genetic diversity which would then leave us open to more genetic issues so in an attempt to keep this easy as long as one parent is clear then you should never have an affected puppy the cost in the uk is around 40 pounds for a sister new year test so in conclusion why health test or why buy a puppy from health tested parents it is your responsibility to stack the odds in your puppy's favour or in the favour of the puppies that you produce. And while we as breeders aren't God and we can't guarantee health of any puppy, we do everything in our power to stack the odds of health in your puppy's favour. We really hope you've enjoyed this video and hopefully learned something. If you have, give a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Thanks. Bye.